Over the last few weeks, I have been messing around with random exotics, just trying to find some underrated builds, and today, I think I'm bringing you just that. This build is a sleeper pick and can do some work in in-game content. Now disclaimer, first there are definitely better builds out there, but let me tell you, this is an extremely fun build that can make your throwing knife feel more than a rocket. This build excels in very quick burst damage, so it is a wonderful build for running anything with champions, but not necessarily something to run if you need to kill a boss like Nezarek. With that being said, let's get right into the build. I mentioned that our throwing knife will be dealing more than a rocket, but we need a few things to get that started. First, we have our melee that starts the whole build off a weighted throwing knife. This melee can deal precision damage, causing it to be the highest damage melee in Solar Hunter. This is just the beginning too, because this melee has two other abilities. The first being on precision kill, this refunds 100% of our class ability, which by itself is a fantastic addition to the build. But the other ability is something I didn't even know till I made this build. That something is whenever this knife connects to a scorched target, no matter the scorched stacks, it ignites them. This adds free extra damage to any target and pairs perfectly with so many other parts of this build. This melee provides so much utility, especially with our exotics of choice, Arthur's Embrace, which is a pair of exotic gloves I was surprised to find weren't absolutely useless in PvE. These gauntlets not only give our melee the ability to bounce twice, but also make it so when you connect three precision shots in a row on any target, your melee will be enhanced, dealing 200% bonus damage to any target for 10 seconds, with an extra 5 second bonus for each consecutive precision hit, up to 30 seconds. These gauntlets are actually so underutilized that I feel like most people forgot they existed. I know I did. Headed back to the abilities, now we are using Gambler's Dodge so that if our melee wasn't enough to kill something, or maybe we just missed, but we won't talk about that, we can easily refresh our melee with no hassle. Just be sure to get a kill with the melee next time to refresh your class ability in case future accidents happen. Over to the grenade of choice, we will be using fire bolts because with our artifact mods, these nades deal crazy amounts of damage as well as provides two nades. This makes it easier to scorch targets and get ignitions off with our throwing knife or maybe just a two grenade combo for an easy ignition. Last ability will be our super, which honestly could be any of the three, but I did choose blade barrage personally for another quick source of burst damage. Blade Barrage also pairs perfectly with our first aspect, Knock Him Down. This aspect enhances our solar supers on Hunter, but specifically for Blade Barrage, it makes it launch more projectiles, which in other words makes it deal a lot more damage. Our next fragment is On Your Mark. This aspect provides us with a handling and reload speed on Precision Final Blow or when using your class ability. While nice, this isn't the reason we are using this fragment. We are using it for the incredible 3 fragment slots this provides to the build. Sadly, Gunpowder Gamble only gets one fragment and hinders the build a lot, but with upcoming buffs in Season 21, Gunpowder Gamble might see a rise to grace. Until then, this is what we are running with the build and trust me, those two fragments are worth it. Speaking of fragments, let's get to them. First up, we have Ember of Ashes, which is a very simple fragment that just lets us apply more Scorch stacks with a 1.5 times multiplier. This means our Firebolt grenades mixed with certain artifact mods can set off ignitions with any other source of Scorch. Whether that is incandescence, your other grenade, or your throwing knife, an ignition will go off, setting off a nice explosion and a good chunk of damage. Our next fragment is Ember of Searing, which makes it so whenever a Scorched target is defeated, we will get melee energy as well as spawn a fire sprite. Fire sprites are an important part to the build because not only do they give us grenade energy on pickup, but also because they pair very nicely with our next fragment, Ember of Mercy, which gives us a two second restoration on fire sprite pickup as well as when you revive a teammate. If you didn't know, Restoration is a constant healing effect while you have the buff and it's very useful for survivability. Now 2 seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time, but this is just to get the Restoration effect going. To help out with the length and survivability of Restoration, we will be adding on the fragment Ember of Empyrean. So that whenever we get a solar weapon or ability kill, it will extend this Restoration buff to a maximum of 12 seconds. The window is kinda tight, but as long as you have a throwing knife or grenade available, it should be easy to pick up a kill and extend this timer. Each kill provides 3 seconds to the timer. This fragment also has a second effect, buffing the length of Radiant on kill as well. Now you may be wondering, how do we get Radiant? And that's where our next fragment comes into play, Ember of Torches. This gives our throwing knife the ability to give us a 12 second Radiant whenever it hits a target. Radiant is very good on any solar build as it gives weapons an extra 25% damage bonus as long as it is active. This is a very noticeable buff and extremely easy to keep going as it just requires kills. Now I just want to take a moment to ask y'all to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the video. I'm going to keep posting builds like this, it's kind of a slow part of the season, but when the new season drops with all the buffs are getting 
it, I'm just gonna keep spamming builds. And if you guys want that, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would enjoy it very much. Other than that, let's get right back to the build, and I hope you're enjoying your day. Moving over to the weapons now, there isn't a particularly best loadout for this build. I have messed around with quite a few different combos, but I've landed on two builds that I think would work perfectly with this build. My personal favorite is Conditional fi Finality for the constant freeze up time as well as free ignitions, keeping all unstoppable champions in check. Callus Mini Tool with Unrelenting and Incandescence, and a Solar LMG with Incandescence as well. I am personally using Avalanche with Subsistence and Incandescence, but Fixed Odds and even a World Drop GL Marshallon work well with this as long as they have Incandescence. This setup is great, but does lack constant damage from range and is more of an aggressive loadout. The second loadout I would recommend is a 1-2 punch shotgun, any of them. I'm using Ragnhill D, the Hake craftable shoddy. Callus Mini Tool again, with Unrelenting and Incandescence once again, and 1000 Voices. This build gets the job done from range, but also can run into ammo issues later, as 1000 Voices is the only other way to stun unstoppable champions outside of your buff throwing knife, which typically you want to use for damage. If you didn't know, 1000 Voices Beam applies Scorch, and it is a, if the full beam hits a target with Ember of Ashes equipped, it'll ignite them. Now moving over to the mods, we will start off with our orb generation mod, which will spawn an orb of power if you meet their conditions. These mods include harmonic siphon for solar multi-kills, firepower for grenade kills, heavy handed for throwing knife kills, and reaper for a kill after using a class ability. Picking up an orb of power gives armor charges, and these charges will be used with two different copies of solar surge mods and a stasis surge if you are using conditional finality, otherwise use three solar surge mods. These mods will increase our damage by 10, 17, or 22% based on the number of surges you have equipped for 10 seconds. To make it so we have extended uptime on these mods, we will also have a time dilation equipped, making it so that our 10 second timer goes to 15. Rounding out our remaining mod slots, we have one copy of Bomber so we get grenade energy when dodging, one copy of Ashes to Assets for extra super energy on grenade kills, one copy of Hands On to do the same thing but for melee kills, Impact reduction so that when we cause melee damage, we can get some of our grenade back, and three resist mods if you're choosing. Finally, slot in whatever stat mods you need for the build. I would prioritize maxing stats in this order, resilience, discipline, and mobility. You mainly should try to get resilience to at least tier 8, then focus mobility, but discipline will also come with that as stats split pretty much evenly onto the top set of stats and onto the bottom set. Moving to the artifact now, these artifact mods are important as they improve the potency of your fire bolts and just the build in general. You should have almost every artifact perk in this picture as everything but the void buff stuff significantly improves this build. Specifically, the solar and grenade discount mods, solar surge for armor charges on fire sprite pickup, flare up for extra scorch stacks with fire bolts, and rain of fire bolts for a second fire bolt grenade at all times. So the gameplay loop for this build is pretty simple as you just want to enter engagements getting throwing knife kills. So start off by getting three precision headshots with your SMG or whatever weapon you want to use and then throw your throwing knife to kill a target. This will enable Radiantite, give you your throwing knife back and also spawn an orb so that you can get an armor charge, making it so you have your 25% damage increase from Radiant on top of your solar surges. So you could just get a pretty nice bonus to damage as they do stack and then you just want to run around just destroying everything, continuing to generate fire sprites, keep your radiant up, try to get restoration stacks up so you can just continue to heal throughout everything, and just keep annihilating everything with your damage boost. And then you just have conditional finality or 1000 voices, or just like your backup throwing knife with one two punch just to take out anything a little too tanky like a champion. So the gameplay loop's very simple, just continue to kill stuff, and whenever you need extra damage, use your throwing knife. This last little section is going to be a few things to note while using the build. Three things in particular. First thing I'm going to note is champions. The two loadouts I give you guys can stun all three champion types, but the only issue is anti-barriers. You will need to have Radiant active to stun anti-barrier champions with those two loadouts. And the only weapons that can use the Radiant like effectively are with the conditional finality build. Your LMG will be the only thing that can pierce the shields with Radiant. And then with the 1k, you can send it with your shotgun or 1k. So that's a little more helpful, but you still have to be wary of how much ammo you have at a, select, at a given time because your Mida mini tool will not be able to stun champions as it has intrinsic overload. So that is not a reliable source for you to stun uh, anti barrier champions. So keep in mind your radiant timer and how much ammo you have, those are important for anti barriers. 
Second thing I want to know is a weird bug with Restoration and Ember of Mercy. So, Ember of Mercy is the fragment that gives you Restoration whenever you pick up a Fire Sprite. For whatever reason, when you have that fragment on and you grab a new Fire Sprite, it will reset your timer back to 2 seconds. So you just need to keep in mind, even if you have a 12 second re restoration timer, it'll reset it back to 2 seconds. I'm almost positive it's a bug, but who, who really knows at this point? And the last thing I want to know is that your throwing knife, your melee of choice for this build, does more damage to frozen targets. So if you want to use like Riptide or Conditional to freeze targets and then throw your knife, it will shatter and deal uh, insane amounts of damage. Not really sure why this works, it's just always done it. Your throwing knife's always done more damage to frozen targets. But yeah, uh, that's about it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate a sub. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs somewhat soon. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And yeah, have a good day. I hope to see you guys in the next one. See ya.